I've always enjoyed the Masters, you know. It's a nice tournament, 16 best players in the world. For me, it's just about playing well. I don't really care about winning or losing. I know that I can play this game and, and just not miss, not for a day, but for months. And sometimes I've had two or three years where I've just felt like I can't miss a ball. So that's a tremendous feeling to have, you know, and I know that when I go out, it doesn't matter what my opponent does, I'm going to find a way to punch holes through it and, you know, and, and just, you know, dominate. So for me, it's, um, that's quite a nice feeling, you know, um, to have that sort of power, if you like. I'd rather be 4 nil down and playing well than 4 nil up and not playing well, because I know I can reel six frames off double quick time if I'm playing well. I don't mind missing, because I just know my opponent's going to miss and let me back in. They don't always, but 99 times out of 100, I just know. I mean, you just keep piling pressure on. You don't have to play well, but as long as you keep piling the pressure on your opponent, they crack. Hello. Ken how are you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, good, good. You, you, are you on your way? Yeah, I'm on my way. I want to leave here at 11 o'clock. It's, it's half past nine there, so you've got an hour and a half. Um, come round, we'll have a cup of tea before we go, bish bosh. I don't really like having people around me when I'm at tournaments. I like to just have one person um, that I can just be around. I think if there's too many people there, sometimes you get pulled about, you know. I don't, I don't actually like talking about snooker, to be honest with you. So I choose people that sort of just, we have a bit of a laugh and just chat about normal stuff, really, whatever it is. Anything but snooker, really, you know. You can talk all you like. But when you're out there playing, it's a different story. So yeah, it's just about light, lightening the mood most of the time, you know. You're getting excited. You're getting excited. Uh, yeah, I'm getting butterflies. <laughs> what butterflies? How are you getting, bro? You ain't got to go and play. No, I'm more nervous than you, mate. All right, mate. Well, listen. Yeah. Relax, chill out, and I will see you when you get here. And I'll get the kettle on, and then um, yeah, I just want to leave here at eleven because I don't want to be late, you know. Yeah, yeah. Have you got any biscuits? Do I need to bring the biscuits with me? Bring what you like, mate. I embrace the pressure now, I embrace all that stuff that comes with being a winner. 99% of the time I'm always wanting to win by the crowd, you know, so I'm used to that feeling. A lot of people think, oh, I couldn't play under them circumstances, but I'm used to it. So I've learned how to cope with it because I realise it's only the chosen few that kind of get to dominate their sport and, and be the best at their sport. So I embrace it as a sort of a privilege in a way. I'm quite, I'm quite into my healthy sort of stuff, but... Yeah, I've gone off Western food recently because I've been spending so much time in China and Asia. I kind of realised, like, sort of some of the stuff that I was eating, I was thinking, like, what is going on here? So I thought I'd get myself a smoothie, just try and be a bit more kinder to my body, you know? It's just about the enjoyment of playing. Um, so for me, uh, it doesn't matter that it's a big tournament. Um, if you play well in a big tournament, great. Um, but if you play well in a, a, a not such, such a big tournament, still get a great feeling from playing well, you know, doing your job well, you know. I'm 48, my eyesight's not the greatest, my knees are a bit creaky, you know, I've got a dodgy old arm, and, uh, and I'm still beating these, <laughs> these so-called up-and-coming players. So it's, it's a bit of a... I can't get a bit of a kick out of it, really, just sort of thinking, like, are they getting worse, or am I just sort of still doing all right? I don't know. Uniform? You see my shoes, I've got holes in them. <laughs> me lucky shoes, though. I'm fine if I get that done. No, I'm only joking. Might not play so well. Here we go. All ready to go. <laughs> Just make sure if you've got any bags, have your bags out ready for a check, please. Tickets out. Have a good one, friends. <laughs> It always feels weird though when you're playing like a tournament where you're just driving from your house, you know what I mean? I always prefer like staying away, getting settled in a little hotel, you know what I mean? Thank you. When I used to come to the Masters, I, I, I went through like a few years where I was like, I weren't doing so well. One year I just stayed in a hotel and I, and I won it and I was like, okay, I think just having that sort of, sort of, being in isolation and just getting yourself in that bubble and just, you know, just every tournament you play, say you play like 12, 15 tournaments a year, 14 of them you're staying in a hotel, so it becomes like, that's the normal in a way, you know, but then when you start to break that routine up, what you usually do, it starts to feel different, you know. Wow, this is going to be absolutely brilliant. A rerun. 
You just want to get your first match out of the way, though. You know what I mean? Every, every first match, every tournament is always a bit of a, you know, you think, oh, how am I going to play? How's it going to go? You know what I mean? I mean, I obviously get a bit more nervous at this one, the Worlds. This is the Worlds, really. I don't know, because obviously this is London, rowdy crowds. So you know you're going to be in for like a big atmosphere. Make sure you're on the list, is it? Yeah, I'm, I'm... Is that the name on the list? No, it should be Ronnie O'Sullivan. Playing to that, one o'clock. Oh, you're the player? Yeah, do you want to let me in? Oh, uh, yeah. You sure? Well, can I just make sure you're on the list first? I'm not on the list, does that mean I can't go in? No, I'll get permission. I'll Are you sure? Yeah, I can get you permission. Really? I'm playing in five minutes. I'll be out, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's all good now. You all passed in that, yeah? Yeah, all good. You, yeah? You are, yeah? Cool, cheers. This is the most fantastic tournament on the calendar for me, the only one in the, in the capital. And of course, we've got O'Sullivan, just won his eighth UK, going for his eighth Masters. You know, incredible achievement. And uh, he's playing Ding, he's never lost a Ding here before, but uh, tough first round draw. It's the second day of the Masters 2024 from the iconic Alexandra Palace, undoubtedly one of the standout venues of one of the standout events in the entire snooker calendar. He's got so many gears, if he wants to win, normally he generally does, doesn't he? He's just a genius. We're all uh, in awe of him, really, even his uh, fellow players, but they can't show that on the table, can they? <laughs> He's got more talent in his little finger than most players have got, you know, in the body. He's just, you know, he's, he's generational talent. We'll never see his like again. He's just been on the top of his game ever since he burst onto the scene. He is always fancy to win, and even if the bad Ronnie turns up, it's a surprise. But then when the good Ronnie turns up, you're not surprised, and he just dominates. Yeah. He's in good form, so yeah, I think he's the man to beat. I'd say he's probably the most popular player amongst the fans, is that fair? Except for me, yeah. It's friends reunited here at Alexandra Palace this afternoon. Ronnie O'Sullivan, the record holder, of course, as he is now in most tournaments, seven wins. He's been in 13 finals. <laughs> and he's just mopping up here. O'Sullivan off and running. Listen to the roar from the Alexandra Palace crowd. <laughs> Ronnie O'Sullivan at the moment in full control of the match. Halfway towards a place in the quarterfinals. Fabulous stuff, this. Yes, this black for Master Century 84. And you just know there's going to be many more. This is what they came to see. And Ronnie O'Sullivan has duly delivered. Opportunity and over the years he's made a, a series of big breaks from positions like this. Uh, what a moment this is! Unbelievable. Ding Jinwin is the black, it will be his second maximum break in the Masters. Wonderful. What a break. The crowd on their feet. 
here at Alexandra Palace. Warm congratulations from Ronnie O'Sullivan. Well, his cage has been rattled a little bit, hasn't it? And he's responding. Spellbinding Dennis Lucan now. As ever, he finishes off in style. And for the 25th time, Ronnie O'Sullivan reaches the quarterfinals of the Masters. We'll all remember Ding's wonderful maximum break, but in the end, it's the world number one who progresses a winner, 6-3. Yeah, I felt relaxed. I felt relaxed. I felt like all right, you know. I wasn't worried at any point. Um, I was worried this morning when I was on the practice table and I was carving everything up all over the gaff. You know, you get a bit worried then, but then when you come out into the match, sometimes you, you're forced to find something, um, a feeling or whatever it is that you're looking for to, to allow you to play, you know. It was nice when I had 777. Now I've got 778, so it'd be nice to go 888. I said I was happy with one world championship, one UK, one Masters over the moon. So when we start talking about going beyond that, I sort of just see everything as just a bonus, really. You know, it's a bit of um, icing on the cake, really. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ronnie O'Sullivan and welcome to Eurosport Snooker on YouTube. Click here to subscribe to Eurosport Snooker.